Good day. I'm Piers Corbyn from Weather Action Long Range Weather and Climate Forecasters. And uh, we're here today, the 29th of November, to <coughs> give an autumn review and a December update forecast. Okay. Autumn 2011 was a very interesting season both because of uh, unusual solar activity um, as solar cycle 24 got more active and certain specific lunar situations which gave us corresponding uh, extreme or unusual weather events, most of which we forecast. Now we correctly predicted the mild autumn um, uh, although it stayed mild longer in November than we expected and we'll discuss that a bit more later. And we also got all the main significant events in Britain, Ireland and Europe. And the American forecasts again for extreme events went uh, extremely well. Um, in Britain we for example, correctly predicted the warm end to September, the extremely warm end to September, and the mild wet October, while others had said uh, at the end of September, in fact they'd said in, in August I think, um, that we were going to have a very cold, wintry, snowy <laughs> October. Um, but when you read between the lines and where these statements appeared, you could see they were really trying to sell winter tyres early. Um, with the assistance of the Daily Express. Um, now, you know, I think you have to say these things are pretty ridiculous, um, but that's what they were up to. There you are, remember that headline, which you can uh, have a look later, but it's on the, <coughs> on the handouts. Um, if we have a look at what happened through the autumn, we've got them spelt out on these, these, these statements. Um, we had a graph of temperatures in September. Very clearly, the highest uh, temperature in September uh, in the south and east was going to be right at the end of the month. And it started at the day we said. Uh, interestingly, it carried on warmer that, uh, for longer than we expected. And this was because... Uh, so it appears there was an entangled pair of sunspots on the, on the surface of the sun. Now we thought that there would be a lot of activity and when that happens it usually you know, upsets the jet stream and prevents static situations. Um, if, if they're not entangled. But you see they were entangled and it seems like that, that prevents particles coming for a period and then they come in a big, big whack. Uh, or at least that's our way of understanding it. So um, that heat wave was a bit longer than we thought, but nevertheless uh, it was there and very significant. Then at the beginning of October, if you recall, there was violent storm force 11 winds uh, in, uh, to the north of Scotland. And this is early October, right? not late October. So this is quite, quite rare stuff. Uh, but it reached force um, <coughs> at exactly the time we said. Um, October was generally mild and wet, and the end of October, in particular Halloween, was very mild, and we'd also spelt that out uh, from 44 days ahead. Um, <coughs> you also said October yep. being dry in the southeast, which it was. Yes, yes. Uh, October was wetter in the southwest than we thought, but <coughs> nevertheless the general picture was what was okay. Now, in parallel with that in America, we had at the same time as the mild Halloween here, there was heavy snow in the northeast USA, which was exactly on time uh, as, as we said. Um, Start of November, we had a very interesting uh, simultaneous appearance of uh, uh, earthquake events, um, a tornado in Worcester, um, and a very deep low zooming across the USA.
in the North USA. And if you look in our weather map, it was there. There's the weather map, and here's the, here's the deep low. It was quite, quite astounding. Um, uh, and just as an aside, well, I'll say that our earthquake trial forecast for November uh, have gone ex extremely well. And where we specified we'd have a QV period, that is a quake or volcano increased risk, uh, we had the uh, uh, quakes or, and or uh, volcanoes and we didn't have, I think, any in the spaces between. So this was, uh, you know, a highly skilled forecast. Although what we're doing about earthquakes is still only a trial. Now we come to the interesting bit. What went on uh, in uh, November? Okay, well, we said November would be very mild or mild for the first 10 days in the United Kingdom and Ireland, uh, which it was, that was very good. And then we thought there would be quite a rapid cooling down to very cold or almost very cold at the oh, end. Okay. At the end, at the end of November, yeah. Now it didn't, in fact, it cooled down a little bit, but really uh, hardly noticeable, especially given that it normally cools anyway during November. So the cooling in mid time didn't happen, and then we noticed there was this very um, uh, long magnetic uh, event on the surface of the sun, which was eight hundred thousand kilometers long. Now this thing is like giant sausage. It's called a suspended above the surface of the sun. Uh, was uh, 20 times the distance round the earth. Right. Um, and we're not quite sure what it was really representing except we know when these things start collapsing and there's a lot of arguments about this anyway in astrophysics they do give certain types of solar flares and big uh, big boosts to uh, impacts in the solar wind and therefore uh, extreme weather events um, but the important thing was this appeared and it coincided with our forecast in the United Kingdom going wrong and our forecast in the USA going wrong. Um, ignoring those bits for a minute. For, so you see down in the southeast USA we said there would be high pressure. Now there was high pressure but suddenly in the middle of it there was very big thunderstorms and tornadoes at the same time around the 18th or so of November that the forecast was going wrong in England. Uh, what, we'd, what we'd wanted, you see, we had these, we'd expected low pressures to come tracking in and go into the Med. And they, they did do that. Some did do that. Uh, or they were trying to. And at the same time, we wanted highs building here. So the tail of all this stuff would be a north wind and this high to get stronger. But the high didn't get stronger and basically <coughs> retreated and the, the, there was a kind of ridging in the Atlantic of it a bit but, but not, not up there, more like down here. So what we were having was lows diving a bit but, or, or avoiding this altogether and going straight through. So we had part of the picture we wanted or another way of looking at it is that the, the lows we expected, we also expected lows there were in fact all shifted like, you know, 500 miles west. So there was something a bit strange going on, you see, from, from what we wanted and what actually, actually happened. Um, now, what we think is that this period, the second 10 days of November, marked a switch from what we call two sets of weather types. One is uh, lunar dominated, call it L type, and the other is uh, solar, uh, so sorry, stratospheric wind dominated, call it uh, S type. Um, now, obviously, the moon and stratospheric winds play a role in all of them, but uh, you see, when you look in the past, you may or may not have stratospheric winds which are the right ones as you've got now, the same ones. And what it seems is we're moving into a phase, and that was marked by what happened on the sun, 
identity with the past was more important and what the moon was doing was less important. So that meant that we were moving into a S-type situation. Now the forecast for December had been drawn up assuming an L-type because that had been working all through the summer. So we've now done an upgraded forecast using um, the uh, S-type of data. So we stated on the video in Madrid at the uh, uh, Congress of Brilliant Minds, no less, where I had an argument with a Nobel Prize winner who didn't have, who didn't have much to say. Um, anyway, right, we stated on video in Madrid that November the 27th to December the 28th, or thereabouts, would turn exceptionally cold and often snowy in Britain and West Europe. Now, it has got colder around now, um, and there are, is some snow coming, but it is not as cold as we expected at this point in time. So when, what we're now saying about December in Britain and West Europe is it, it will be snowy um, with blizzards in Scotland and North England at times. Um, it won't be as snowy in the south as we had originally thought in the longer range and quite often it will be rain and sleet in the south rather than, than snow. But certainly there will be heavy snow uh, in the north and there will be snow in all parts at times. Well you'd say it's more the first half of December yeah. than the second half less? Well it'll be, there'll be some very cold bursts probably in, in the middle. Um, a lot of my colleagues are flying out on the 21st, 22nd. OK, well, I'll finish this. Overall, it will be cold until near the month end, um, but not as cold as the original forecast. And the last few days, like from the... It'll start turning mild around just after Christmas. The last few days, especially from 27, 28, will turn very mild exceptionally mild indeed and I think we'll describe New Year's Day as warm uh, and probably dry by, by then. Um, Pardon? Across most parts. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. So over, overall the month will probably be colder than normal because of the, the main bulk of it but the very warm end will, will distort it a bit. Um, it will be windy often so it'll feel more uncomfortable and colder than actual temperatures are so people will remember it as being a pretty nasty cold month but uh, the average temperatures won't be as bad as all that because the nights will be generally cloudy um, and if people go on the website they can find out the details of what I'm saying and also whether or not it's going to snow on Christmas Day. Hmm. Now, doubtless the, um, those people who put out five forecasts before they get one right um, will moan that we've amended December to less cold than we first said. Um, but it is still going to be uh, largely snowy, uh, certainly in the north. Um, Usually, we, uh, when we do forecasts, we only have one hit uh, against other people who have, as I said, often five. Um, but we do have to change this uh, uh, noticeably because uh, science requires it. Okay, well, I'll end there and ask for any statements, and then later on we can make some comments on what's happening in... Uh, the Global Warmers games in Durban.
things to uh, talk about. One is extreme events around the rest of the world, and the other is what is happening in uh, the adventures of the uh, CO2 global warmers. Um, first of all, we announced in Madrid a six extreme event forecasts around the world. And what I said about Britain Euro and Europe, exceptional cold spell, was just one of them. And uh, we've just amended that to being less cold, and that will also have implications as to whether it's going to be um, cold or not in, in Spain, for example. So we'll put out a statement about that. And we'll also have to amend the statements we made about America. But often America works the same in L-type and S-type lookbacks, as, uh, whereas Europe can be different. Okay, but we will issue statements, so people should not take what we said before on the video as the answer, but we'll put out another video updating those. Some will stay the same and some will, will change. Okay, <clears throat> now, what is happening to climate change politics? Because it is just politics, right? Now, they got another meeting in Durban of the Church of CO2 Delusion. Um, <clears throat> now, they are desperate, these people, because the world weather has gone against everything they said. However, rather than admit that, they, well, lie, lie, and lie again. Uh, they've been caught meddling with the data and they now say things frequently which they know to be untrue. For example, they say this or that event was caused by CO2. Now, they've no evidence for that, whereas we have evidence, very specific evidence, that certain events are caused by things that happened on the sun. Um, for example, I'll read a list of extreme events, some of which, or in fact all of which, they attribute to CO2. Last year, the West Russian heat wave and the super floods in uh, Pakistan. That was in August, right? The super cold uh, uh, December in, in Britain and West Europe. <laughs> They, they said that was global warming, if you recall. Um, <laughs> that was a sort of upset circulation due to global warming. Melting ice caps. Absolutely. Up there. Very cold USA winter and the specific series of blizzards, such as the Boxing Day blizzard, northeast USA. Then we had the Queensland tropical cyclone Yazzie there, bzz, simultaneous with blizzards here. Um, then we had a series of USA tornado spells, including a tornado swarm, which destroyed Joplin. And then we had some notable storms. It wasn't, a, yeah, they weren't all very big storms, but there was one very notable storm, Hurricane Irene. And uh, President Obama was jumping up and down that the end of America is almost coming and we've got to get ready and, you know, bad people marching around uh, away from, from where it was coming. All of these events that I've just listed were predicted by us, uh, in many cases, months ahead. And we can show they were preceded by solar events. So, you see, if the global warmers really cared a damn about their populations, they would actually use our forecasts in order to prepare for these events, reduce suffering and save lives. But the New York Times is more interested in defending its religion than in saving lives, which I think is a tragedy. But it means this religion has to be opposed. In fact, it has to be destroyed. And we have to move back to evidence-based science, not politically-driven pseudoscience. Thank you.